Ever since I published my video, Cringe Animations Need to Stop, I've been getting a plethora of comments telling me about how horrible that era was overall. Something that I actually forgot to mention was how these cringe compilations aren't nearly as common as they were back in 2016 and 2017, and I think it's fitting to call that time period the cringe era. But if we can take a step back, can you just ask what the heck was going on? Okay, we had cringe compilations running amok. Every single time a red and black OC was made, it was attacked by the masses, and no one was allowed to show anything less than a degree level proficiency in animation, lest they want to get struck down by God. It was hell. Like, I'm still trying to figure out why that even happened. Like, what kickstarted the cringe era in the first place? Actually, a couple of things did. First off, let's define the term that was thrown around constantly during that time. What is cringe? Cringe. A grimace. A disgusted expression forced upon your face. A natural reflex that occurs when we see something revolting. What could that be? What could possibly be horrible enough to make us want to rip our eyes out? Poorly made art. Now that I think of it, what an overreaction. Low key, it's like the cringe era was the same as that traditional era where everything had to be perfect realism. If your art was, dare I say, bad, guess who's getting got? <laughs> like, work on that line work and make sure when you use the fill bucket tool, there's no white. Do you hear me? But even if the work was well drawn, the color pattern was wrong, they'd still get guillotined and hunted down. Like, there was two categories of bad color, okay? Like, there was objectively bad art in terms of color theory. You know, like, eye bleeding, conflicting, too many colors around the page. And then there was the emo color palette, where people just straight up weren't allowed to use black and red as main colors. I'm talking legitimately good character design, and people attacked it because it was edgy. Oh boy, that, that's another hot term. Like, God forbid your characters have a goth or punk aesthetic. This whole era was a hot mess. So that's cringe. Now back to the main question, what kickstarted this era? Cringy fetish art. No, I'm not kidding. A bunch of art YouTubers started making videos about weird art people made, usually found on DeviantArt. And it was bizarre. It was mostly poorly made fetish art, but the fetish would be so strange. It'll be like cartoon characters getting their feet tickled with inflation and so much more strange stuff, you know, I'm not gonna lie. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've, you've seen it if you've been on the internet. I still think it's a semi-healthy way to practice your fetish without actually, you know, hurting people. I've seen people who literally have kids women dying by laser. So, you know. But I like to think that most of that stuff can't realistically happen anyway, so I'm safe thanks to the laws of physics. Anyway, they were the initial targets of the attacks, and even though they were poorly drawn, no one assumed that they were children because of the nature of the artwork. Also, they made art for one specific purpose and didn't care how it looked. Making fun of this work initially was lighthearted, like, har har, look at this weird art, but then it turned negative very quick. People started to witch hunt the artists that made the work and kind of created this culture of finding bad artists who draw bad things and just harassing them. Um, unfortunately, this mindset led to people wanting something else to attack, so then they moved on to tracers and art thieves, another thing that could easily be defined as bad. Let me be clear as crystal. I completely disagree with the idea of tracing, but gotta admit, bit of an overreaction, alright? I remember when I was a kid, just getting into digital art, like using Microsoft Paint and a freaking mouse, yeah, I traced. I would look up Sonic X screenshots or bases, but eventually I got tired of having to look for a base or a particular pose to draw something, so I dropped the base and started tracing my own work. I would take a photo of my traditional work and trace it digitally, which was a step up, I think. <laughs> Then of course I stopped being absolute garbage at art and now I'm moderate garbage, so that's that's even better. Anyway, so first fetish art, then tracers, who was next? This is kind of where everything else that was edgy or wasn't well drawn was thrown into burn. This was around the time Undertale was at its peak, so Sans fangirls were also at their peak. Let's just say there was enough fuel to keep the fire going for ages. Ages. I know at this point people even started to bash art that was generally well drawn like they had like SJW vibes or whatever like oh my god it was so annoying. To simplify what I'm saying, there was so much art policing going around, it was ridiculous. You think it's bad now? Whew, it was horrible then and people didn't stop because they realized it was, you know, wrong. It just seemed to die out after a while. And that's why I've made videos about how I hate cringe compilations and whatnot. I really hope we don't relapse. The internet is a shitty place, I'm well aware. But that doesn't mean we have to make it shittier. 
When reading some of the comments on one of my last videos, I was heartbroken. The amount of young artists that were affected by this toxic mind frame was honestly astounding. I had people actually tell me that they were too scared to create or post their art because of fear of being put into cringe compilations. And comments where young artists were actually witch hunted and bullied for not being good at art after someone posted in a cringe reblog Tumblr page. That's disgusting to think that someone would legitimately bully people for not being amazing at something they enjoy. But honestly, I hope you changed from then. That era only fostered insecurity, not creativity. It was meaningless. The reason why I'm making this video is so we can keep the cringe era from ever happening again. As artists, we should support each other, not tear each other down. We all have something that deserves to be shared with the world, and we shouldn't create an environment where people are too scared to do it. This video is just food for thought. Anyway, artists, let's do better. Hey guys, give this video a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you soon.